uh, just an uh, invitation for mission giving in December. Uh, many times we take a noisy offering, but because of the, uh, the many opportunities we have to give to missions, uh, we encourage you to do that in the month of December. We have opportunities to give to Mission for Area People if you want to buy a gift for teens. We have opportunities to buy, uh, to purchase and, and donate small items for jail ministry downtown uh, in Muskegon. We have opportunities to support some families through United Way. So those are all available uh, online, and many of those things are due this week and next week. So we invite you to, uh, to pay close attention to that. We also have the opportunity to host Family Promise at the end of the month. And so um, we're still looking for some help with that. If you can sign up, there's a sign-up sheet online. If you uh, need some help doing that, you can call the office. And just to lift up again uh, the opportunities we have for study during the week, Tuesday morning, uh, Tuesday night for both men and women uh, here at church and uh, youth group, uh, Wednesday nights, our women's prayer group will meet this coming, Sunday, or this coming Saturday morning along with the Saturday Sisters Bible Study. And then uh, two other special opportunities this week, we serve at Supper House on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, if you're interested in doing that, you can call the office and we'll get you in touch with the right people. Uh, we also have our cookie walk coming up this Saturday. If you're a baker and love to share uh, your good recipes, our youth would love to have uh, those, those cookies. Uh, all those proceeds will support their mission trip fundraiser. So keep that in mind for Saturday. Uh, also, if you want to come and purchase cookies, they'll be available. And then just uh, two other things uh, coming up. Next Monday, December 13th, a week from tomorrow, is our Blue Christmas Worship Service. Uh, for those who are uh, struggling with grief of any kind in this season, uh, we offer time and space to acknowledge that and to find hope and healing. And so uh, if you or someone you know might be helped by that, we encourage you to invite them to be part of that. And then next Tuesday evening, December 14th, we'll have our next worship brainstorming time for a series that will be in, in January. So keep those things in mind. Uh, as we worship today, again, we're talking about making space at the table. And so um, we know that the tables in our homes are sometimes are places to eat, to be sure, but they're also uh, things where, uh, a place where other things happen, uh, a place where we sometimes find peace and love and nourishment where we experience uh, Thanksgiving as well. So uh, this is a short video called The Table. Take a look. The table is where life happens. It's where imagination runs wild where lessons are learned and wonders are built. The table is where time can stop, where wounds are comforted and freedom begins. where we find peace <laughs> and we laugh till it hurts the table is where we gather with family new and old to share stories to nourish our bodies to enrich our souls the table is where we give thanks and where we remember what great gifts we have been given. As we come to the table today, uh, we think about making space. And sometimes uh, maybe the table feels like one of those games of musical chairs where we're convinced that there is not enough room, there's not enough spaces at the table. And so we shrink the guest list just in case there's not enough, we scramble to occupy those chairs first. And yet the, the word that we'll hear today is a reminder that we can make real a gathering of all people to the table. We can work for peace with justice and that's what really matters. 
And so as we come uh, today, as we worship today, uh, we're going to light our second Advent candle. And I'm grateful to Brad for leading us this morning. Will you follow along with me, please, and read where it is highlighted for you? Today we offer the light of peace to illuminate the door of welcome. May this light shine in our hearts, in our lives, and in our church. May peace awaken us to possibilities and lead us to greater hospitality. There is room, room in this inn, inn a house, house for, for the, the holy. holy. I want to invite uh, the kids to come forward and make their way to these front pews. And as they do, uh, just simply an invitation for them and for us uh, to be ready to say good morning. All right. Go, count of three. Are you ready? All right. We'll say good morning on count of three. See if they answer. One, two, three. Good morning. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, so today is the second Sunday in the season of Advent. We're getting ready. We're coming close to Christmas. Is anybody else excited? A little bit, yeah. Some of you, um, I don't know if you were, I can't remember if you were here last week, but uh, last week I had a big gift bag wrapped up, and guess what was inside it? This box. And guess what was inside the box? I was hoping it was a puppy. What's inside it? Nothing. That's right. A couple people were kind of disappointed. Nothing. But we talked about how uh, sometimes when uh, there was nothing in the box because we talked about hope and having hope and waiting for something and using our imaginations uh, to make the box into something. Ever, anybody ever played with a box? Yeah. We can make it into a lot of things. And today, I want you to think about this box as a table. Okay? Now, it's a little table, right? But it's a table. And we could add more boxes, couldn't we, to make the table longer. We could add boxes this way to make it wider. But think about this box as a table. Now, um, tell me one thing you do around the table at your house. Tell me, Mila. You eat at it. That's right. All right. One other thing. Yep, you eat at it. You eat food. Absolutely. So tell me... One of your favorite foods. Quick go. Bacon. Ice cream. Bacon and ice cream. Anybody got a favorite food? Keelan? I know you like bacon. Bacon and salami. And ice cream. Delicious. Does anybody like uh, to cook for other people? Does anybody like spaghetti? I like spaghetti. Um, does anybody like mac and cheese? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fun to have meals together, isn't it? To, to eat meals together, right? Um, now, what if, um, I want you to think about this, this is no ordinary table. I want you to think about this as the table of peace, all right? And wonderful meals take place around the tables of peace. Um, so we talked about a little bit about what your favorite foods are, and all of those sound delicious to me. I could go for some bacon and some ice cream right now and all the other things you mentioned. Uh, but when we come to the table of peace, we don't necessarily serve ourselves. We serve each other. So would you be willing, do you think, would you be willing to share what you have so that others could have some of it too? Would you share your bacon? It's a tall order. Would you share, would you? That's a little easier to share than ice cream, right? But um, think about how we might share what we have. And how many of you are, are still learning to cook? Right. Some people back there, too. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry if you're not sure how to cook spaghetti or mac and cheese. It's okay. We're using our imaginations right now. So imagine that you're the finest chef in all the land. All right. And so uh, we could share our favorite foods. We could, we could uh, make those for everybody, and that would be wonderful. But I want you to remember that there's always room at the table of peace. And not only is there enough room for all the things that we've prepared, whether it's bacon and ice cream and mac and cheese and spaghetti and all those other things, and salami too, right? I heard salami, yeah. Um, 
There's room for people, all the people. There's always enough room for people. And through the peace that God gives us, there's not one table for some people and one table for other people. There's one big table. Think about how many boxes we could add this way and that way to make a huge table for everyone to gather around. Uh, that it's a place for everybody. And so when we make room for the, at the table, there's peace uh, for everyone because no one has to fight to find a place. Has anybody ever, ever had to fight to find a place in the lunchroom? Or like been worried when you couldn't find a place to sit? It's a little scary, isn't it? Yeah. I want you to think about the fact that we have, God makes the table big enough, wide enough, long enough that everybody can have a place at the table. All right? So, um, I want you to see uh, uh, just a short video. Um, This has reminded me of making a place for everyone, all right? Uh, And I want you to watch what this little girl does. All right, take a look. see what she did? She left Jesus there, right, in the nativity set, and then she brought all her special things. I saw Cookie Monster there. I think I saw Ken and Barbie and a sheep. All those things she brought to be around uh, the nativity set to make a special place for them so that they could be around Jesus. And when we talk about making a space, making a place at the table, I want you to think about this. We said this is our table today. This is going to be our communion table. A little later, we're going to celebrate communion together. And that reminder, when we celebrate communion, it reminds us that Jesus loves us and wants us to love each other and make space for everyone. All right. So can we pray together this morning? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for always making a place for us. Help us to make a place for one another and to remember that we're called to share your love with others too. Guide us every day. Help us uh, to follow you closely. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, and our friend. Amen. morning again. Uh, My name is Brad Hillary, and uh, before we see the God moments that folks sent in this week, I wanted to share with you two short God moments um, from myself. One of them is really a lifelong God moment. As I was preparing for uh, today and thinking about the videos and my experience with the table, I was blessed to have one of those very open and welcoming tables growing up uh, in my home with my family. And yes, we ate dinner, and we played games, and we did puzzles, and we did homework. But one of the things that I remember most about that table 
was as a, a, uh, a teenager um, and coming home after football games or school dances or maybe once in a while a party as I got a little later in my teen years, um, my parents would be up and I could go and sit at the table with them and talk about what happened that evening and talk about those teen challenges. And so I'm very grateful that I had that in my life. That was my first God moment that I remembered. The second one was something that seemed quite simple at the beginning and then became profound to me because of what we've talked about here in this sanctuary over the last couple of weeks. And that was I went to Myers. Now maybe some of you have done this before. Myers is our local uh, grocery store. And I went in to get a couple of items. Has anyone ever gone to the store to get a couple of items? Well, I was going to get a basket, and I said, eh, I might get more than a couple, so I'll get that small shopping cart. Well, that was full by the time I got done getting a couple of items. And I went up, and I said, well, I'm not going to scan it myself. One of the lanes that had a, an employee it was open, so I said, well, I'll go into the lane. And so into the lane I go, and they're scanning all my uh, items, and they're putting them into the bags, and we're putting them into the cart. And when all that gets done, and I go to pay for my groceries, the machine breaks, okay? And so everything that we've just done has been lost for my few items. I was like, well, do we need to rescan them? And like, I, I think we might. I'm like, that's fine. Do you need me to go to another register? And so I had to step aside, and then they had to get a manager, and then they had to get a computer person over. And I'm just waiting patiently. I don't know why, but I was. And then we went to another uh, lane, and they thought they had downloaded it, so I didn't have to scan everything. And sure enough, it worked. I didn't have to rescan everything. I just put my card back in. He gave me both receipts and said, in case it double bills you, let us know. I thought that was the end of it. But as I was walking away, there was a woman in line at the customer service desk, and she called me over. And she said, I just want to tell you how unique that was, that you didn't get upset, that you didn't yell at the cashier, because that's what most people would have done. And I thought about in that moment, people are watching us. And we've talked about that. Mary has preached about that. We're not always that patient or that good, especially when we're behind our cars some days, on how we operate and how people see us. But as, we t as, the, as the phrase goes, they will know we are Christians by our love. That was an opportunity where I was not doing it on purpose. I was just being patient and kind, but someone else saw that and was grateful for that moment. And so I stopped, and I'm like, thanks, God, for making me be on the right side of patience in that moment. So let's watch the other God moments that people sent in this week, and then I'll close this with a centering prayer. Let's pray. Holy God, we know that you want us to come and walk, that you 
want to come and walk with us through the journey of our lives. You send to us a Savior, Jesus the Christ, who seeks to offer us a pattern for living of our daily lives. Forgive us for the times when we have turned our backs on your invitation and have chosen to walk on our own way. Forgive us for the times when we make the path into our hearts steep, making it hard for you to enter. Forgive us when we treat even our loved ones with an unforgiving spirit. Forgive us as we are busy with our lives, with diversions that deflect our attention from you. We invite your Holy Spirit to dwell within us and bring us close to you today. We give thanks to the one who creates us. We give thanks to the one who redeems us. We give thanks to the one who brings the spirit of holiness to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. We now come to our time of offering. Uh, we have baskets in the back of the church for the members of the uh, church to, to give your monetary offerings and an opportunity to offer yourself through prayer, through presence, and through song as our praise band leads us in a couple of worship songs. Please offer with me.
As you may be seated, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the words of hope and peace that you offer. We thank you for the gifts that we can offer, our hearts, our hands, our help, our resources, and we pray that they would be a sign of your love and your grace for a world in need. Guide us every day in the ways of life and hope and peace. We pray in the name and spirit of Christ. Amen. Before uh, I offer scripture this morning, I just want to say a word uh, of invitation and a word of reminder for us as we think about the ways that we open our hearts uh, to those in need this season, especially. A uh, word of thanks, first of all, to our MNO team, our membership, nurture, and outreach team. Uh, this week, um, they, along with some friends, helped to deliver more than 30 bags to our homebound uh, friends in our congregation. So we're grateful for that. And as we think about making a place uh, at the table, as we think about housing the holy, as we think about expanding our reach, I want to thank our youth groups for uh, their work to uh, take some candy canes and put some, some inspirational messages on those. Those will go to um, reach the forgotten jail ministry and uh, be given to those at the, the jail this season. A reminder that um, we are thinking of them and praying for them as well. Uh, and again, I want to mention as we think about housing the holy, the opportunity we have to uh, support uh, people in need those who are seeking permanent housing uh, by hosting Family Promise at the end of the month. Uh, so may God help us as we open our doors uh, and, and help people in need. So today there are two scripture readings. Uh, the first comes from Baruch. Now some of you are saying, what's Baruch? I don't remember that. That's not in the Bible song that I learned. Somebody asked me that this week. They said, I read that and thought, I've never heard of this. What, am I, did I miss something? Uh, in Sunday school, well, here's, here's the $10,000 word for today. Baruch is a deuterocanonical book. If you want that word, you can impress people all around you today. Deuterocanonical, which means that um, there are other branches of the Christian church, namely the Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church, that have Baruch in their canon. Uh, the Protestant Church does not. That happened about 500 years ago when it was taken out. But be assured that Jesus and the New Testament writers knew of Baruch, and Baruch was thought to be, um, is thought to be Jeremiah's scribe. So he has some connection to the prophet Jeremiah. So I offer, you, offer us these words today, um, partly because they're beautiful words for us. It's uh, some beautiful poetry for us to hear and, and words of hope. So hear this this morning from Baruch chapter 5. Take off your mourning clothes and oppression, Jerusalem. Dress yourself in the dignity of God's glory forever. Wrap the justice that comes from God around yourself like a robe. Place the eternal one's glory on your head like a crown. God will show your brilliance everywhere under heaven. God will give you this name by which to be called forever. The peace that comes from justice. The honor that comes from reverence for God. Get up, Jerusalem. Stand on the high place. And look around to the east, see your children gathered from the west to the east by the Holy One's word as they rejoice that God has remembered them. And then from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, this is Philippians chapter 1, uh, beginning with verse 3. And remember that Paul writes this letter uh, while in prison. Every time I think of you, I thank my God. And whenever I mention you in my prayers, it makes me happy. This is because you have taken part with me in spreading the good news from the first day you heard about it. God is the one who began this good work, and you and I am certain that he won't stop before it is complete on the day that Christ Jesus returns. You have a special place in my heart, so it is only natural for me to feel the way I do. All of you have helped in the work that God has given me as I defend the good news and tell about it here in jail. God himself knows how much I want to see you. He knows that I care for you in the same way that Christ Jesus does. I pray that your love will keep on growing and that you will fully know and understand how to make the right choices. Then you will still be pure and innocent when Christ returns. And until that day, Jesus Christ will keep you busy doing good, things, doing good deeds that bring glory and praise to God. 
word, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So today we've lit two candles, the candle of hope that we first lit last week and the candle of peace. But friends, <clears throat> if I stood here uh, and told you that I feel both of those, I'd be a little bit dishonest this morning. So I need to be honest that talking about peace today and talking about hope last week falls flat in the midst of where we are. I've been struggling to feel both of those, though I know hope and peace are more than mere feelings. Still, they seem elusive in moments this week. Uh, maybe you felt that too, the ebb and flow of this week. Now, I know the right answer that hope and peace are ours in Jesus Christ. I believe that and stand firmly on that truth, but I join with many others who are weary and wanting to grasp any small bits of hope and peace that I can. And I don't know if you felt that way this week, but I did. Anything that I could grasp onto, I needed it. Though we read this beautiful poetry from Baruch, who has a connection to the prophet Jeremiah, as I said, probably was Jeremiah's scribe, I'm more tempted to go back to Jeremiah, the prophet, who says that there are some who are crying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. I cannot stand before you and offer an empty word of peace today. I can't say, don't worry, it'll all be fine, because it is not fine right now. This is not the way it is supposed to be. It's not the way it should be. And I don't want to become desensitized to the reality that we're living in. The events of this week, including the news of a school shooting in Oxford, hit me hard. And maybe they did for you too. And yet, I know violence is an ever-present reality for others who live with daily threats in communities nearby, even outside of the school building. People who live with daily threats of violence in places around the globe. Tragically, there are people we know who could give a list of names of loved ones who have died because of gun violence. That is a reality for people. This is not the way it should be. And this week, uh, a colleague of mine posted a prayer from theologian Howard Thurman. And it's become poignant for me. This is what Thurman prayed, sensitize our spirits, our Father. May we not shrink from the present intensity of our experiences, lest we turn away from the redeeming power of thy perfect love. Amen. Sensitize our spirits. I don't want to become desensitized to things like this. It is not okay. In our country... There are more civilian firearms than people. Friends, when it comes to gun violence, I know I don't want it to increase. And no matter our thoughts and feelings on the issue, I hope we can agree on that at the very least. We must have responsible, law-abiding, we must be responsible, law-abiding, safe, and well-trained if we choose to own a firearm or carry one. And I hope that we will be proactive in advocating for laws that protect people and prevent gun violence as much as possible. I pray that we will seek out ways to curb violence as a way of, as a way of life. And that starts with an, in our own hearts. And I pray that we'd reach out to our communities to invest in education, mental health care, and programs that instruct us on how to communicate and care about each other better. All of those things make for peace. And we talk about peace as we talk about making room, this time making room at the table. We want everyone to have a place. We want to offer safe space for people to be and to grow and to nurture their relationship with God. One song says, a shelter, a space, a safe place for growing. It's a song we'll sing when we celebrate communion today. We want to make room for Jesus and we should make room for others to have a place around the table of the Lord. But I cannot help but think of families that are facing empty chairs around their tables. There are tables with empty chairs for those who have been the victims of our addiction to violence. There are other tables with empty chairs because of other losses, some to illness, 
some to the natural order of life and death. I'm aware, even in this week for myself, three deaths of people I know, one of them to cancer, one of them to COVID, and one of them simply to the natural order of things. And all those are reasons for grief, deep grief. Whatever the loss, that grief is real, and the pain of an empty chair is real, is real too. And so today we stand in the tension of where we are right now, knowing that peace does not come easily. We know it's possible. We know it's promised. But it is still unseen in its fullness, and it may seem far off today. At least it feels that way for me in this ebb and flow. There are moments when I've clung to it, and moments when I've cried out, God, where is it? And I've stood with the prophets and said, you can come anytime, Lord Jesus. Come anytime, because we need you. Even more, peace requires something of us to admit that we need it. And so we sing songs of Advent. And maybe you've heard them. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Come, God, with us. Set us free from this mess we're in. Help us. We cannot do this alone. We know we need you. We know why you were born, to show us the power of God with us, to bring salvation. We know that you will come again and bring the fullness of God's kingdom, even as you call us to work for it right now, even and especially when things aren't the way they should be. We know that you call us to look around, to see the devastation and the pain along with the highest joys, but to see the devastation and the pain, not to become desensitized to it. We should never be okay with this. You call us to look around and to act in ways that will make it less so, less dev devastating and less painful and make this world more just and more peaceful. These are, there are things that need to change, things that need to be different. We need to be different. And if we're truly living out our call to follow Jesus, that's what has to happen. We have to be different. This world needs to be different. As we're making this Advent journey, the need to repent and return to God is real and even raw for me today. Maybe for you too. And though I didn't read that text, there is uh, the fact that John the Baptist, John the Baptist is my guy. I love him. And he comes every Advent, he's kind of like the unwelcome guest <laughs> who comes and says, repent. And we go, why do we have to talk about this, John? <laughs> it's Christmas. Repent. Get back. Things aren't right. We'll talk some more about John next week. But John's there, calling us back to where we need to be. Jim Wallace sing, talks about singing his way back to hope and the power of the songs that we sing in this season. He says this, because our only hope is that light does come into the darkness, that this child born in an animal stall is still more important than all the kings and rulers, that the lowly are closer to God than all the high place people that we are forced to watch and listen to all the time. Singing our way back to hope. I found my heart deeply moved as I listened to words of the songs of the singing Christmas tree. Some of you have seen it. Maybe you saw it this year. Uh, we're blessed to have some of uh, our, our young people involved in bringing that wonderful offering to our community. But there were moments when I was singing my way back to hope and hearing it as they sang. And so here are some lines. I can see... I can see the light of a clear blue morning. I did not know Dolly Parton wrote that song, but it's now a favorite one of mine. Look it up if you've never heard it. There was a Hanukkah song called Light, and the words are simple. Light the, let the light shine in the window when you think it's almost gone. There is still hope. Another one was a gospel song. I know my Lord will make a way. And then... There was the one that you might know and that I know and that in our Methodist tradition we love to sing because it's Charles Wesley's words. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Hark the herald angels sing. 
It was balm for my soul and a challenge for my spirit to know that deep down I claim the promise of hope and peace. Peace begins with seeing one another as God's beloved, and some would say that we can't have true peace until there is justice. And I believe them. Last week we talked about how sometimes it's hard to make room. Remember, making room in your house, cleaning out a room. The same is true when we talk about making more space at our tables. Anybody have to clean off a table when somebody's coming over? I have piles. I got to clean off a table. But maybe we ask those questions. Will, Will there be enough space for me if I scoot over? Will there be enough to go around if I let someone sit? Even today, we hear those words about Christ coming. Love the guest is on the way. That's from a hymn called The People Look East. Love the guest is on the way. Hospitality is an Advent discipline, preparing our hearts for the coming of Christ. And maybe you've had to make more spaces at your table. Anybody have card tables they have to set up sometimes to fit all the people? Extending the space, using another room to give everyone a place to sit. Maybe you've had that experience of looking for a place to sit in a crowded lunchroom. Anybody been there hoping for a place at a table somewhere? Some of you have watched kids do it in a lunchroom and how heartbreaking it can be when there's not a place. Maybe you've been the one to sit with someone who was all alone. There's a song by Sidewalk Prophets called Come to the Table, and it says this, we all start on the outside, the outside looking in. That's where grace begins. So how do we welcome those who are in need of a safe space? Baruch is reflecting on the experience of exile, homelessness, and displacement, the life of a refugee. And so we get this beautiful poetry about throwing off the clothing of oppression and dressing in God's glory. It's a powerful image when we think about what he's talking about because remember that clothing is the only real shelter for those who are homeless. That's all they have. Throw it off, he says. Dress in God's glory. To wrap up in justice and to know that you have a new name, peace that comes with justice. It's an assurance that God gives us the things that matter, that we build peace together when we care for the most vulnerable, when we make space and we remember that we grow closer when we share a meal together, when we come to the table. I hope all of us have at least one experience of how we've grown closer to somebody else by sharing a meal together. Getting to know someone. Maybe letting our uh, presumptions, preconceptions die a little bit at the table. It happens for me when I make space for others. It's happened for me when I've been at Supper House And taking the time to sit across from someone who I didn't know and hear their story. One time a veteran who simply said, I'm so thankful for this meal and this space to come and eat with other people. It's happened when I've sat across from somebody downstairs when we host Family Promise and I hear their story. And let go of some of the assumptions that I've made about why they are where they are. If we want to make a place at the table, it means knowing that there is enough for us getting away from a scarcity mindset and allowing love with a capital L to guide us and remind us that there is enough. It means seeing others as important and worthy and accepted and loved. And we get this word from Paul, this encouraging word to the church people in Philippi. It's a love letter to the church that Paul writes God is at work in you, he says. God will keep working in you, helping you to do the right things that will point the way to God and give God glory. Love will find a way to make more space at the table because that's what love does. Love finds a way to make more space at the table. And that's our calling. 
And when it comes to the table where we, we, where we receive God's grace in the bread and in the cup, these very simple, simple things, we need to remember whose table it is. It is Jesus who invites us there. It's not us who invite each other. Jesus does. And he doesn't invite us because we're worthy, but because we need to come to the table and experience the love of God so that then we can take that love out and share it with people who need to know it deeply. Advent is a time to remember just how much we need Jesus and how much the whole world needs Jesus. I don't say that as a platitude, but that's our charge, to be clear about whom we love and trust as Savior and Lord, to be committed to to making this world more like God's kingdom, to seeking peace and doing justice and not being content with the way things are because they are not the way they should be. So we come to the table this morning. Coming here means looking at ourselves, and our Methodist ancestors would come to Holy Communion professing that they were at peace with God, reconciled with their neighbors, and making progress in holiness of heart and life. How many of us struggle? Peace with God, reconciled with others, making progress in our daily lives. That's why we take time to confess our sin before we come to receive the gift of God. We admit our need for grace and peace that only God can give, and we find assurance of God's forgiveness that infuses us with new life and hope and peace for each day, even in the midst of chaos. And so maybe that's the message that I need to hear for myself, and that's the message I offer us It might be hard to come by, and yet there are those glimpses of hope and peace that we can claim and cling to. Because things are not as they should be. Everything is not fine, and yet God is at work. God is with us. God will be with us. God offers us those moments to claim, and to know that God's presence is real. But that God also calls us to do the work of making peace. Friends, I would invite you just to simply listen as we prepare to come to the table to one verse of a song called A Place at the Table. that all would have a place at the table but we come praying in our own need for forgiveness and grace let us pray friends God we confess that we are not blameless as we come to you today we trust the promises of others and we struggle to believe the ones you've made there are moments when we are held captive by our own sin but we doubt you can save us So many times we prefer prefer the ways of the world rather than walking in your light. And so we pray for forgiveness today, faithful God. May the light of Christ show us your way. May the love of Christ overflow from our lives to others. And may the life of Christ be our model as we seek to be your people. Amen. Brothers and sisters, there is good news. God's tender mercy rests on us. It heals us. It transforms us. God's light breaks into our lives and shows us the way, the way of peace and hope 
and grace and forgiveness and service. Thanks be to God. Amen. So we come to the table and we remember that there was a night long ago when Christ gathered his friends together, all of them having a place and they ate together and when the supper was over, he took a cup took the bread first he took the bread and said this is my body given for you every time you eat it remember me and then he took a cup and he gave thanks to you oh god he gave it to his disciples and said drink from this and every time you drink it remember me and remember my love for you and so today we pray oh god that you would be with us that you would guide us that you would pour out your holy spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and cup open our hearts in and through this act stripping away any excuse or fearful hesitation so that we will open our doors to the world as the body of christ redeemed by his blood redeemed by his love and grace by your spirit make us one with christ one with each other one in ministry to all the world until christ comes in final victory and we feast together through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, I invite you to take and to eat. Remember the goodness of our God. The bread of life and the cup of salvation. and gracious God thank you for this blessing this reminder of grace the promise of hope and peace in our lives and the challenge to pursue it faithfully every day guide us in your way in your will guide us in our walk with you we pray in the name and spirit of Christ who taught us to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen friends would you stand as you're able Let's join in song together. If you're joining us online, join us in song as well.
we've come to the table, we've been fed and nourished and challenged and convicted by the grace of God to go and make room, make space, open wide our hearts for the coming of Christ, open wide our hearts to the needs of the world, go in peace and make peace.